What's going on? This is Ryan with Automatic Comics, and up next, I'm going to go over the top 20 comics I've picked up this year. Stay tuned. Alright, so before we get started, please remember to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. Got the idea for this because I'd seen some people recently posting uh, pictures on Instagram where it was like their top 10 or 6 or whatever it is books that they'd picked up this year. And so I started thinking about what books have I gotten this year and I started looking through it and it's, I mean a lot has happened this year so far. So I thought it would be fun to go over the top books that I've picked up so far this year, the top 20 books. And I would love to see other people's videos on, on a topic like this as well. I'd like to see if you've got a channel out there or if you want to comment in the comments section about books you've picked up this year, or books that you've added to the PC or just books that you bought. It doesn't have to be PC books. I will talk a little bit about that, whether it's a book that's on my keepers list or not, because a number of these are keepers list books for me. And the way that I've organized these is I've just done them in value. It just makes it the easiest from the uh, on the top 20, the lowest value to the highest value. And you can do your list however you want if you want to make a video, but that's how I decided to separate these out for myself. So, number 20 on my list. It's actually a book that I just did an unboxing of. This is X-Men number 12. Uh, this is a 7.5, first appearance of Juggernaut. Awesome book with the, the date stamp here. And my I personally, I like X-Men number 14 more. I, I like that cover a little bit more. Uh, just I, I like the Sentinels, but this is a really awesome cover. It's a fan favorite character. This is one where I'm on the fence on this if this is going to be a keeper book for me or not. This I had a 6.5 that ended up selling that was a keeper book for me for quite a while, and I got this one, ended up selling the 6.5, and we'll see if this uh, ends up taking a spot on my, my top 50 keepers list. But right now this one's on the fence. But number 20, X-Men number 12. All right, now number 19. I've got, I've got these, I've got raws and I have graded books. So number 19 is a raw book. This is Journey into Mystery, number 85. First appearance of a bunch of characters, Loki, Heimdall, first cameo of Odin, first time that you have uh, Asgard, but this one, I've got it at, I think, about a 3.5 to a 4. Uh, it's a pretty nice presenting copy, but it's got it's got various things going on on the cover. The biggest concern is along, there we go, it's along the spine here, uh, down here. There's just some wear along the spine. This bottom staple isn't good. The centerfold is detached at the bottom staple, but that stuff doesn't really impact the grade much. The, the spine wear is really it, but it's a nice presenting copy. The center is real clean, everything, so... I'm on the fence on getting this one graded. Um, this one isn't on a keeper's list at the, at the moment, uh, but it all depends kind of what, if I do send it in, what grade it comes back as. If I get like a four to a four or five, might be a keeper. If it's in the threes, I'll, I'll probably end up selling it. But, uh, but yeah, I, I like this cover. I think it's a cool cover. And Loki has really grown to be just an incredible character in the MCU and just, uh, that's just made this book all that uh, much more desirable. Also third appearance of Thor, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty big book, but this is number 19, Journey into Mystery, number 85. All right, now, number 18. This is one that, this was my, I, I called it my silver medal for Punch Comics, uh, number 12. Punch Comics number 12 is just an awesome skull cover, and I actually had a number of people that commented they actually liked this cover, this skull cover, more than Punch Comics 12, so... You know, if it was a black background, I think I'd probably agree. It's the, the green doesn't work for me quite as much, but this is one of my keeper books. This is Gangsters Can't Win, number two, awesome skull cover. And, you know, that's really, that's the only note on this label. It's just like skull cover. You know, that's what, that's what you get with this one. But it's not just that. I mean, it's awesome skull cover. You got this dude punching this lady in the face on the cover. It's just, it's crazy. Like the details on this one, I admit, are better than Punch Comics 12. Uh, you've got this guy over here that's like breaking into the vault. You've got this guy punching the woman on the front. You've got the tellers there, you know, behind bars in the skull. It's, it is a really cool cover. If it was, if it had like a black background, I'd like it more. The green background doesn't work for me quite as much, but it is a really cool cover, and I was really excited to pick this one up. I actually picked this one up from uh, Collector's Comics, which is the uh, the shop or the store that 
um, Dave from Comic Book Investments, the one of the other YouTube comic channels that, that he runs. And I saw this book on one of his weekly like comic unboxings where he says that he puts them up on his site and I ended up grabbing this one from his site. So I was real happy to pick this one up because a 5.0 is a nice copy for this 1948. It's a cool golden age crime, pre-code horror, whatever you want to call it type book. All right. Let's see. Now, number, we got? number 17. This is one that I picked up from loco for comics uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's who I, I picked this up from on instagram he does some great live sales and i'd recommend going and checking him out uh, this is fantastic for number 25 uh, this is a 8.5 white pages copy this is that first cover battle of the thing in the hulk they do have a battle in fantastic four number 12 but this is kind of like a, a big all-out battle the, the one that's really recognized as their first battle but awesome purple cover you know, I love the purple background on this one, but White Pages, 8.5, 1964. Uh, this is also the second appearance, second Silver Age appearance of Captain America. So it's got a lot going for it, um, but this one, not one of my keeper books, uh, but but it is a, you know, one that I think is really cool. And it's got, you know, like the, the date written on there and that grease pencil, which I always, I always like the dates written on these books. I always think that's really cool. But uh, yeah, index four, number 25. All right, so now number 16. This one, I'm just gonna leave this one in the bag. This is, this is one of my favorite books. I absolutely love this book. This is Batman number 42. This is the first cover appearance of Catwoman in the Batman title. She has an earlier appearance in Detective Comics, but first cover appearance, and I just, I love the the page opening, like the the breaking the fourth wall or whatever you want to call it, uh, with with the uh, the covers from these, and so. I just think it's such a cool cover. I love the Catwoman covers. This one's a CBCS 5.0 and it's a, a white pages copy. I have considered having this one put into a CGC case, like cracking it out, having the little bit of a spine roll fixed. I'm not confident I'll retain the five. Um, it, it would definitely be in the fours at a minimum. There are a few like creases on the back. There's one here, and there's one down here. Um, but I mean, it's such a clean copy. I mean, th there's no real big creases or anything on the front. I think there's a little one. Yeah, there's a little one down here. Um, but just such a clean presenting copy. I don't really want to risk losing the five, and I, I don't really want to risk losing the page quality because I've talked about that. If you're submitting, resubmitting a book and you've got white pages on Golden Age book, I'm not a page quality person, but white pages on Golden Age. I don't, I don't really want to risk losing. So, but yeah, Batman 42, White Pages 5.0, first Catwoman cover in the Batman title. Just, I, I, that is on my keepers list. Definitely one of my keeper books. All right, now number 15, another Batman book, but uh, this is from the Detective Comics run. This is one that I also did a recent unboxing for, picked up from Golden Age Guru's uh, friend Eric on their uh, recent live claim sale. This is... Detective Comics, number 68, 3.5, again, a golden age, white pages, copy. This is CBCS as well. And this is the first cover appearance of Two-Face. It is the second appearance of Two-Face. Major, major golden age Batman key. This one is on my keepers list. Uh, so the Batman books, those ones don't fall off my keepers list very often, especially a more of a, a key Batman book like this one. I, this one I am seriously considering cracking out because um, I don't really mind if this one gets a 3-0. Uh, and I don't, I don't really mind if it loses the white pages either that much. I just I think this one can realistically keep the 3-5. Maybe, maybe it could get a 4 if I'm lucky. Uh, it has a spine roll that needs to be fixed, you know, that kind of thing. But it's a really nice presenting 3-5. No big pieces missing or even small pieces missing. Everything's attached except for the, the centerfold. That's the only thing here. Centerfolds are attached, but that's it. But yeah, love this book. Definitely a uh, one of my keepers, Detective Comics number 68. Second appearance of Two-Face, first cover appearance of Two-Face. All right, now number 14. This is from one of my favorite Golden Age runs. And I've been, I've been trying to put together most of these books. I'm not trying to put together the full run, but I, I have a number of them that I really like. This is Famous Funnies number 215. This is 
from this run from 209 to 216 that was done by Frank Frazetta. Just some of the best Golden Age sci-fi covers. And this is one of the two underwater covers. Uh, the other underwater cover is issue 210. Uh, but this one where he's battling this octopus, he's you know generally saving the woman in the red dress on the covers for these. But a 5-0, another Golden Age White Pages book. This is right at the end of the Golden Age, 1955, right before we get to, to Silver Age. But I, I love this Famous Funnies run. I'm, I'm still trying to get issue 213, but I've got all the other ones that I want uh, now. And so there's the back cover. But yeah, getting these in kind of like a nice presenting mid-grade, that's... I mean, I, I don't even mind if they're low grade and in terrible condition. Uh, I'm, I'm happy with the, the mid grade copy of this. So, 50 white pages. This is number 14 on my list. Now, number 13, going to a raw book again for this one. This is Startling Comics number 20. Uh, this is just an awesome early Golden Age cover. It's a World War II themed cover. You've got the hooded Nazi villain on the front, you've got the the woman with like the snake bondage on there. You've got Pyro Man. This is a tough book to get. It is a tough book to come across. I just, when I saw it, I, I knew I needed to try to get this one. So I was happy I was able to get it. This one I have uh, at a 3.5 um, and it is going to be part of my submission to CGC definitely uh, that, I've, that I've been putting together and that I filmed a lot of these different uh, segments for recently. So this one's going to CGC. We'll see how it grades out. The main issue is at the staple here. It's got some tears at the staple, but it, everything is attached in this book. These ones always make me nervous. They're single staple books. These, uh, these ones, a lot of time during World War II is like to save metal. Uh, they're single staples. And so this one, uh, it's just, yeah, it's a, it's a rare book. Really cool cover content uh, from the Startling Comics run. Oh, and that's right. So the Startling Comics isn't currently a keeper book. It might be. It all depends. Uh, again, it's one of those things. It depends how it grades. The Famous Funnies is definitely one of my keeper books. Now I've got the next book here. This is not one of my keepers. This is Punch Comics number 20. Just a, a really cool cover from this Punch Comics run. I, I've talked about Punch Comics quite a bit because there are a ton of great covers from this run. This one is a considered a, a controversial cover because the women on the cover here, some of them don't have tops on. Uh, it's also, it's kind of like a pre-code horror and sci-fi cover because you've got this giant vulture that's like terrorizing or capturing these women, but also this like this woman that's got this like rocket pack on the front. And this is pretty early, this is 1947, so it's in the 40s, it's pretty early pre-code horror type sci-fi books. And so uh, this one especially is one of the, it's, it's a well-known cover from the Punch Comics run. Um, and I'm, I, I have been on the fence on if, if I was gonna put this one in my keepers list or not. Right now it isn't, it may change at some point, but for the time being, this one isn't one of my keepers books. But number 12, Punch Comics, number 20, 5.5. .5. Again, really nice presenting copy uh, with the cool yellow background, all that. And again, it's got that, you've got the date written there, which I, I just, I always like that. All right. So now let's see, number 11. So this is one that I bought raw this year and I sent it in in my recent submission to CGC that came back. And this was a nice positive surprise that I got back with this book. This is Marvel Mystery Comics number 52. This is an Alex Schomburg, World War II, Nazi bondage, everything cover. Like this is, this has basically all the elements that you want in a World War II era cover from Alex Schomburg. Um, you know, I mean, it's, so yeah, you've got this crazy contraption on the front where you've got Toro and then this woman that are that are trapped that are going to be smushed and I don't know if they're going to collect whatever comes out after they're smushed or what. But you've got Human Torch doing, I, I love the stuff where he's melting through the wall. It's just one of my favorite things when you've got him melting through the wall there. You've got the guy here with the Nazi skull scepter and just these other, other guys getting beaten up by the Human Torch. And... There just there isn't much better than Alex Schomburg's Golden Age Human Torch. It looks so good. It's just awesome. Then you've got the Baby Ruth bar on the back. Um, this one also had some staple tears. It's a, a single staple book. You can see it's got those staple tears there around the staple. Um, but yeah, I was I was really happy with how this one turned out at the 4.5. Um, yeah, slightly brittle pages, but I've said this before. I don't care. I don't care about page quality. I especially don't care about page quality in the golden age. And uh, yeah, 
awesome book. So this is number 11, Marvel Mystery Comics number 52. All right, now we're into the top 10. First one is a book I, I recently showed from an unboxing that I got from Comic Connect. And this is Strange Worlds number four. It's a classic Wally Wood cover, really high grade copy for this one, 6.5. Yeah, classic cover, good girl art cover. You've got the people in these tubes or rockets or whatever's in the back. I always get the impression I feel like she's going to like launch them off or something and this guy's coming to save her. That's what I, I interpret that cover as. But Strange Worlds has some awesome pre-code sci-fi type covers. Uh, you've got, this is I think the top one. Then issue number five is another great cover. And then I think issue eight is the robot cover. Those are the, those are the three real big ones, four, five, and eight. But yeah, recently picked this one up, was really happy with this one. And this is definitely one of my keeper books. And also the Marvel Mystery Comics is also on my, my keeper list. So a couple keeper books there. And this starts off the, the top 10 for this, for this list. So now let's move down to number nine. This one, not surprising. This is a, a Batman book and is one of my keepers, one that I recently picked up from the Heritage Premier Platinum Auction. This is Detective Comics number 156. Really high grade for this book. I think I talked about this in the video. I believe there's only three graded higher than this one. And just a really, really cool Batman uh, or Batmobile cover. I love this Batmobile cover. You've got the schematics on there where it's got all the details about his uh, his new Batmobile. You've got Batman and Robin working on the Batmobile with the, the bat face and everything. I mean, just such an awesome cover. You've got the red cover. The back has the, you know, the ad for the Daisy BB guns and just really pops too. So everything is, I just, I love about this, about this book. I'd say the only thing I don't like about this one is I feel like CGC put it in too wide of a case. So it's like it kind of like this, the inner well slot, thing moves back and forth in there, which, you know, it's a little annoying, but I could probably have it sent back in and they put it in a, in a thinner case, but I don't really want to risk any potential damage to the book. But yeah, this one is number nine on my list, Detective Comics, number 156. Got it on the note there, new classic Batmobile, just incredible Batmobile cover. All right, number eight. This one, Let's see. Yeah, this one is also one of my keepers. I think most of these moving up here are on my keeper list. Not a book that I ever really thought I would own and not one that I thought would end up on my keeper list, but once I got it in person, it's just such an incredible cover. I really like this cover. This is Superman number nine, 6.5, just a classic early Superman cover. This is 1941s. This is, this is getting early there. But it's, the reason I really like this one is it's a, a lot more action-packed type cover for Superman. A, a lot of the early ones, he's kind of just like standing around or not doing all that much. But this one, just I, I think it just it really pops. And in a 6.5, the colors are really great. Again, someone, you know, you've got like a couple dates on there. You've got this date that was probably done when the book was received. I'm guessing this one was something that somebody added after the fact. But this would have likely been when the... Uh, person got it from the distributor or whatever it might be but superman number nine awesome classic superman cover and this is number eight on my list and man the back cover <laughs> that back cover is crazy it it's brighter than the front i mean the front cover looks really nice but that back cover is incredible really cool uh really cool back cover on this one so yeah number eight superman number nine all right now number seven Another one that is on my keepers list. So I showed one book from this run already today. This is the one that I just recently picked up. This is Famous Funnies number 210. This is the other underwater cover in an 80. I was not planning on getting this book in this grade. I was hoping to get one in a little bit lower grade, but with these Famous Funnies books, when one comes up and it's at a price that you think is is good for, for that, that run, then you get it. You just you, you go for it. And this one felt like a good price for the 80, and so I decided to go for it. And it's just, I mean, it is an incredible copy. Um, it has 
a couple little things that I've, I've been considering if I should crack this book out. It is, it definitely hasn't, like I talked about this when I did the unboxing, it definitely hasn't been cleaned, um, but it's got a small little color break. So I'm gonna just show it down here. And I think, I think that might end up holding it back from, it might get an 8.5 with that. And I think this can be cleaned up, up here. So I think it has a chance at an 8.5. I originally thought maybe a nine, but with that uh, with that crease down there, I don't think so. But I mean, geez, golden age, 1954, with just edges so clean and sharp like this. It's just, I don't know, it's crazy to me to get these books in this kind of condition. But Frank Frazetta cover, awesome underwater cover. Uh, this is this is one of my favorite covers in this in this run. It's just, it's got a lot of like motion to it or flow with the water. I think like her hair looks incredible in there. Just everything about this cover is fantastic. So uh, Famous Funnies, number 210, 80. This is number seven on my list for this year's pickups. All right, that is number six. Oh yeah, this one. Okay, I was pretty excited when I got this book. Um, I recently sold a book from the other, uh, another book from this run that was in high grade that I had picked up. But this one, I decided to put on my keepers list. I'm not planning on putting this one up for sale for now. This is Incredible Hulk, number two in a 6.5. This is the second appearance of the Hulk, but the first appearance of the Green Hulk. This is a big book for that character and it is tough to get in this type of grade. Getting this thing, anything outside of like a two, three, maybe a four is really, really difficult in these early Hulk books. Once you get up in the sixes, sevens, and eights, the, the prices, they just, they ramp up really, really quick because they're just so uncommon. Because it's already generally a lower census count book. It wasn't as popular of a book. And so getting them in high grade is really tough. So I was happy to be able to pick this one up. Six, five, just really, really nice presenting copy. I mean, edges are clean no marble chipping on this book which is tough and you've got you know just like a little bit of wear on that top edge but otherwise super nice copy of this one so yep was really happy to be able to to pick up this book so incredible hulk number two first green hulk second hulk overall and then you know second appearance of a bunch of other characters as well and of course the toad men you know they're major characters that i'm sure we're gonna see in the mcu at some point all right, now, moving on to number four. Now I've got to get into, uh, these. this is one that, that's a different sized slab. This is another one that I picked up pretty recently. This is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, number one. This is the second print in a 9.6. Second print is really tough to get uh, in, in higher grades. They're actually, on the census, there are less than you have of the first print, even though the first print had a lower total print. I don't know if it's just because people haven't graded as many of them or they're actually tougher to come by. But I really, I wanted the second print. I used to have a 9.6 of the third. I wanted at least the second print because the second print looks exactly like the first print. Um, so I talked about this in that video when I did the unboxing. The way you can tell the difference between the second or the first or second and then the third is the blood on the, on the sword. The first and second look identical, the third looks different. And so that's why what people have sometimes tried to do is, you know it's a second print on the interior. It's on the interior and people would try to remove what identifies it as the second print so that they could try to sell it as a first print. Yep, I was real happy to have the opportunity to pick this book up in such a nice grade. I never thought that I would be able to get this one in a 9.6. And opportunity came up and I, acted on it and I'm, I'm excited to have gotten it. I am trying now to get the other issues of the of these larger format books in 9.8s. I have number four, um, I have the 9.6 of number three, and then I, I still need to get a number two. But I've, I've been seeing prices come down on the number two and so I've been, I've been waiting a little bit to see if I can get that for a better price. All right, now, and, and that one is one of my, is one of my keeper books. All right, now this one, also one of my keeper books. This is, I'm still in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number three, and this is not the normal Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number three. I've talked about this book a few times. I did a video about this book and about the print count on it. And what this is, is this is the special variant edition. This is 
uh, if you have the uh, the regular print, these the word layers, and then a lot of the cover has more of like a filled in light blue tone to it instead of being white. And so you can see they, they called up here the Laird's photo on white cover. So this is what's considered the variant edition. It goes for a significant premium above the regular one, like a 9.8. I think last year had a sale of around 20 grand. Uh, so 9.6 doesn't go for quite that much, but this is pretty pricey. The other big thing with this one is that it's signed on the interior by Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird. And now I know I've had some people ask about that. Well, why didn't get a green label? Because it's on the interior. If it's on the interior, you don't get the green labels. I've also asked, well, then why isn't it yellow? Does it actually add value? Yes, it does. Uh, if you look at the price differences between the ones that are signed, blue label, and unsigned, it's fairly significant. Uh, and I, I generally think it's just because with these ones, most people recognize that they were signed by those creators at that original Comic-Con. And so, yeah, so this one, you know, signed by Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird, 9-6 awesome copy of this book super super rare uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles book so one that you just you don't come across very often and I, it'll be hard for me to uh, ever really let that one go all right now number three also on my keepers list this one is going to CGC in my upcoming submission this is crime suspense stories number 22 this is one of the top golden age pre-code horror covers it's just like i've talked about this it's you get the crazy over the top cover content and that is what drives value in pre-code horror books and this one is about as crazy as it gets and so this one i have at a five five to a six it's got a few little things going on but in general it is a super nice clean presenting copy of this book and it is tough to get in a condition like this and you just you don't see them come up very often, and I was happy I was able to get this one. I'm nervous about the grading uh, because it's just, I mean, it's an expensive book, and so I, I'm nervous about the grading. I'm nervous that, you know, CGC might mishandle it or something like that. <laughs> Gosh, that would, uh, it would wreck my day, um, but really happy about this one. Definitely a keeper book for me, uh, so Crime Suspense Stories, number 22, one of the top pre-code horror covers just that's out there in existence all right number two actually not on my keepers list i've had a few people ask about this book so i definitely have some interest in this one uh likely when i get it back from grading um this is fantastic four number one now the thing with this book is that it is trimmed and so it's trimmed on this edge and it's trimmed on the top and so yeah it's got it's got trimming on it but for me it was the right price for you know being trimmed and so I'm definitely going to be getting this one graded. I have this one at a 2.5. It's gonna get a purple label restored uh, for the trimming. My main concerns, cause it is, I mean, it's a pretty nice presenting copy. I mean, there's little things going on around the edges and some little creases and that kind of stuff. But my main concern with this book is along the spine. You know, it's just got, it's got a lot of wear on the spine. It's attached, but I've had concerns with, with CGC with rough spines because uh, they've, they've damaged some of the spines on my books when I've sent them in for grading, and if they damage the spine on this one, God, it's like, it's thousands of dollars of damage. And so I just, I hope, I hope that everything, you know, comes back the way that I send it. Um, but, but yeah, Fantastic Four, number one, restored, but a 2.5, and uh, this is, this is the first time I've had one of like the big, big Silver Age keys. I've had an Amazing Spider-Man 1, um, but I've never had like an AF-15 or like a Tales of Suspense 39 or Journey of Mystery 83 or anything like that. And so this is the first time I've gotten one of those big Silver Age keys. So number two on my list for this year. All right, now number one, if you are someone that has watched my channel, you should probably expect uh, what, what book this is gonna be. This book is definitely on my keepers list and is likely never going to leave my hands. This is Detective Comics, number 168. First appearance of the Red Hood, origin of the Joker, and this is also from the Promise Collection. And it's just, it's a 1.8 because it's a detached cover, but it is an incredible looking 1.8. I, I mean, yeah, just look at this thing. Even the back cover, incredible. 
no big pieces missing, anything like that. Just a stunning looking copy, stunning presenting copy of this book. And I just the Promise Collection pedigree label just really, really makes it pop. I, the gold label looks awesome against the against the black. So this one is my number one pickup for this this year so far, and I don't really see anything topping this. I mean, just such an incredible book. And so, yep, Detective Comics number one sixty eight. First appearance of the Red Hood, Origin of the Joker, number one book for my for me for this year so far. All right, so those were my top 20 pickups so far for this year. Again, make sure to leave a comment, let me know what are some of those books that you've picked up this year. And if you've got a channel and you wanna make a video, I'd love to see your video, tag me in it, let me know, and I'll, I'll share that video out there too. So, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. I've got more videos over here. If you'd like to watch some of my other videos and the subscription button right here. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, I'd really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video.